Hi, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to make modern websites using HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. <clears throat> In this video, I'm going to show you how uh, to use pra uh, Flexbox practically. Sometimes we learn these different techniques or we learn these different design uh, coding things uh, like Flexbox or Grid or we learn different ways to to control things, but we don't always have like some really solid practical examples. Uh, we sometimes just have to go and sort of hunt for those and look for things that we can do or um, wait for it to come along so that then we can use this cool new thing. Uh, so I'm going to give you some some examples of how I use Flexbox every day uh, on websites that I build, production websites. Um, so we have four different things. One, we're going to create a menu, <coughs> uh, a horizontal and a vertical menu. Um, we're going to do centering. Uh, we're going to do what, uh, what I call a two up. So if you're accustomed to magazine layout or print layout, you know, a two up is like one thing on the left, one on the right, sort of a two column um, look. And then uh, we'll use uh, Flexbox to Flexbox to visually reorder the content. So uh, we'll keep the order here in our HTML source code, but we're actually going to use Flexbox to reorder the elements uh, on the fly. So these are ways that I use Flexbox uh, almost every day. And so let's get into it. So the first one is to create uh, a menu. And just to bring some clarity to the exercise, let's just comment these things out so that they're not in the way visually. Okay, so the first thing we have, uh, we have a basic unordered list that we're going to turn into a menu. So let's just jump right into the CSS. Uh, this is just sort of a, <coughs> a common image thing that I did. It just sets everything to 100% because the image that I'm using is 900 by 900 pixels, which is, is bigger than my viewport here. Um, so I just want to keep everything on on the screen uh, where we can see it. <coughs> All right, uh, so what do we have here? We have uh, a div, it's called menu, and then inside that we have an un unordered list, it's called menu nav, and then each of the list items is called menu nav item. So we need to target our menu nav and I'm just using uh, uh, HTML and vanilla CSS here you could use SAS or uh, SCSS or whatever you want to use um, and the first thing we want to do is get rid of the bullets so we say list style of none and then we want to get rid of the padding so we set the padding to zero <coughs> And it still leaves us with a little bit of margin on the top and the bottom for the unordered list. You can leave that or not, doesn't matter. And then here we're just going to set this list to display flex. Now, the default uh, for this is that they flex to a side by side. Okay, our list style is misspelled, that's why our bullets are still there. <clears throat> so the default is a horizontal flexing, so it puts them side by side uh, with one another. This could or could not be what you want. To change uh, the direction, you say flex direction, and then there's either column or the default is row. That's why the, they um, that's why they go in the X direction first because this is the default. So if you want to change the default you would say column like this <coughs> and then that sets them back into a column. Uh, obviously if you want them to be in a column and you don't need to sort of move back and forth between a row and a column uh, simply leave display flex off of it because these are all block level elements so uh, they're all gonna sort of wrap down to the next line so you don't even need Flexbox if what you want is to have them in a column all the time. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm going to show you uh, how to sort of make that change. So on small screens like this, uh, it's going to be in a column. 
and then when we get out to larger screens when there's a little bit more real estate let's say uh, 450 pixels just to pick a random number <clears throat> so we put in a media query we see app media and the minimum width is going to be 450 pixels then we want to take this menu nav and really the only thing that we're going to be concerned about uh, these these styles here are all going to stay the same it's still going to be display flex um, thing we're concerned about is flex direction and we can set that to a row uh, so at 450 pixels uh, it's going to be a row which is horizontal alignment but once you get under that it's a column alignment so maybe this is a, a pattern that you need uh, one thing that you could also do to save a, a few lines of code is just to wait until 450 pixels to set the flex because you only want um, you only want it to happen here because our normal I showed you before our normal um, layout for an unordered list is a is a yeah a column so it's a vertical layout and then once you get to 450 pixels then you get your flex box kicked in so flex box uh, can be done at any point it can be taken off it can be taken on so if you if you decided at 650 pixels that you needed this also to be um, back to its original then you could just merely say display block and then once you get out to 650 pixels it goes back so you can turn on and off uh, the flex box or the grid uh, whenever you want to it it's not something that has to be declared and is always there so once you come out here uh, this item no longer has display flex attached to it so any styles that you've done uh, that are going to affect the flex are going to be effectively they need to be changed or they're going to be effectively gone uh, so you're going to have to account for that so you can either add uh, flex at the beginning and the time when this would be um, really important is let's say you wanted to come down and you wanted to do um, you wanted to do something like this where there's visual reordering of the content so in your HTML it looks one way but for the viewer you want or the user you want to be able to show it in a different way then you would need to set a display flex or display grid uh, to the item and you might have to manipulate the columns at that point to get what you want uh, because really what you want is the reordering properties not the uh, alignment properties so <coughs> excuse me just something to think about uh, as you're dealing with uh, flex box and alignment is a little bit different than reordering and so just thinking about how those things work together okay in our second example here let's just uncomment that <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and comment this out so we don't need that anymore uh, in our second example we have a, a headline and we have a button and we need to center this inside here and this is a this is a common pattern for let's say a hero image so for the hero we're going to just going to set a background image um, and it's going to be a URL of HTTPS uh, let's say source dot unsplash.com slash 1600 by 1600 and it'll be um, New York let's do that so it should pull in uh, images of New York and you can see here that it's a background image on our container but it's not most of the time when you see this it's you know it's half of the width or the height of the uh, the viewport or it takes up the full screen or something like that so the way you make it do that is you come down and you say sorry uh, height 
<laughs> is going to equal 100 viewport heights. So now it's taking up the entire. Now it's taking up the entire screen, and uh, it's a block level element, so you don't necessarily need to declare a width on it. Uh, let's go ahead and clean up this background image a little. So let's say background uh, position is going to be center, which centers the image in the middle. And we'll say background uh, size is going to be cover. Uh, let's not do New York. Let's do uh, let's just do city. Okay, and that that should just bring up a a city image for us. <coughs> Any city doesn't have to be New York. Okay. That feels like a city I've been in before, but I don't know. Uh, background size of cover, and then I like to just throw this in. Background repeat, no repeat. So you're probably not going to get a repeat because of the way that we fixed this. So it's probably not an issue, but I like to do it anyway. So let's look here. We have, uh, we have our hero, and then we have an H1, and we have a button. So if we say hero h1 we want the color to be white <coughs> that looks good and we want the margin on that to be zero that's uh, we're getting a little bit of margin at the top of the screen um, you can see up there that it closed up you see how it's it's there now and then when I complete that property it's going to close that up so that margin it was on this uh, headline uh, so if you get some weird uh, alignment with uh, your headings just know that they have some margin on the top and bottom and you can clear that uh, and then or you can reset it right you can reset it to what you want it to be okay and then theoretically we should be able to come back up to our hero and say display flex sorry all right flex and getting all kinds of stuff here so we come up to our hero and we say display flex. Now, this is our button. You can see I'm clicking it. Our entire, uh, our hero image is 100 uh, viewports high. So that's why our button is sort of taking that height. So our button is really tall. Our headline is here. And they are flexed because they're next to each other. That is not exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about a headline here. We're talking about a button underneath, all centered um, inside the page, right? So what we need to do instead of <coughs> instead of trying to fix that here in the hero section, we need to try to fix it here. So one of the things you have to remember about Flexbox and CSS Grid is there's a container, and then there are child elements of that container and when you do uh, you create a flex container or you create a grid container all of the properties for flick flex and grid are going to transfer only to the children not to the grandchildren or the great-grandchildren of those elements so right now we're saying hero is display flex and we have two flex two elements in there that are being flexed that's it's doing exactly what it needs to do but this is not what we want what we want is for the headline to be here for the button to be here and then for all of that to be centered in the page so what you can do is you can come and just put a, a wrapper around those things so sometimes I use something called maybe a hero inner and we'll set that like that and then we'll just take our elements and we'll put them actually inside of that wrapper element. Hmm. So let's do it like that. Clear this up a little. Okay, so now we have our hero. That is our flex uh, container. And now inside of our hero, we only have one div, and that's this hero inner div. And you can see now that our headline and our um, button are back together again, right? So now we have what we're looking for. 
and we can go back to our flex properties and we can say justify content center <coughs> excuse me and so that centers all of our uh, text and button because we're really centering this hero inner now because um, because our here or our uh, flexbox container has an explicit height uh, we can actually center it in the middle of that container so in the middle of that hundred viewport heights we can center it by saying align items to the center and then now uh, it's dead center regardless what we do uh, so it's going to be centered vertically and horizontally which is exactly what we're looking for now I would prefer this to be uh, to be aligned center so we'll say say hero inner and we'll make all of those things text aligned to the center that should align our text and our button um, and then for our h1 we can actually put a little bit of margin on the bottom with a two rim and then that'll separate uh, the headline maybe that's a little too much <clears throat> that'll separate our headline and our button uh, so that you have those things together regardless how wide or uh, how narrow our viewport gets it's always centered in the middle so I use that a lot uh, hero images are a big deal uh, if you're creating marketing websites and, and you're gonna have to be able to put text over the top of them so this is a very common pattern all right. <coughs> Sorry about that. Fighting a little bit of cold here. And the next one is um, two side by side elements. Now, I'd, I work in publishing, and so we're dealing with books all the time. And one of the things. Uh, with dealing with books and selling books in a marketing website is you typically have text on one side the book on the other side is a very common pattern for me to use all the time but you see this a lot um, if you're looking on Dribbble or Behance uh, you're seeing designers put text in two columns in sort of a two up kind of fashion so a pretty common pattern you gotta be able to do this and um, I'm just gonna call this two up <coughs> and then inside of that we have an image <coughs> which is our two up image and then inside of that we have our text so we have two things inside this two up wrapper our image and our text um, so let's just do the basics of this down here So let's just see what it looks like starting out with display flex okay so once we do that we can see that um, all of our text comes to one side our image comes to the other side um, <coughs> that's pretty close to what we want uh, although one thing we're getting is sort of a lopsided mm, it's getting a little bit lopsided so all this text is great but the image is real small and we have a gap here and it just doesn't look quite like we want what I'm envisioning is 50% uh, image 50% text okay let's go ahead and just give it a little bit of uh, padding just to get it away from the edges there we go and so <clears throat> now we have this image and text is nice and flexible uh, it's right next to each other. You see the image is changing shape. Okay. So let's get in and let's see what we can do. So we have our two up image right here. And one of the things that we can do is we can set a width for each of the elements that we want to uh, put in here. So let's say our image, let's try a couple things. Let's say we want to have a width uh, let's not do width. Let's use uh, flex. Flex is a shorthand for flex grow, flex shrink, and then uh, <coughs> and then there's a percentage. 
so like if it's flex grow it's a minimum percentage that it has to be uh, if it's flex shrink it's also a minimum percentage but it'll shrink down to that size if it's flex grow it'll automatically go to that size and then uh, get bigger if it needs to so um, let's say this the first one I believe is grow so I'm gonna say um, zero and flex shrink uh, so it's gonna take up one part and then it's going to be let's do 50 percent <clears throat> so that tells uh, the page that it's gonna take up uh, it's gonna shrink down but it's gonna take up 50 percent at least it has to take at least 50 percent of the page so if we copy that we really only have one change and that's here we can say the text so the two up image and the two up text are both going to take up 50 percent of the page so it's a requirement that if they shrink they only shrink down to 50 percent so they're always going to be taking up half of the page you see that so it doesn't really matter how wide everything gets it's always going to take up 50 percent of the page now um, if it were me I would not be using Flexbox for this particular application this is a way that you can do it but CSS grid makes this so much easier um, but this is a way if you want to do a fallback for CSS grid <coughs> then this is the way that you would do that uh, let's say you want um, let's say you want the image to be one-third and you want the text to be two-thirds it's just a mathematical formula here then you say 33% <coughs> and for this one you would say 66% <coughs> or even 67 however you want to do that um, so here you wind up with 100% but no matter what happens on the page this is always only taking up one third of the page and this is always only taking up or it's taking up two thirds of the page but again you're getting sort of uh, a strange kind of look here uh, now one of the things that I would do in order to eradicate that strange look is once I find once I find a breakpoint let's say 850 pixels where everything is sort of how I want it to be <coughs> then I would set the two up to be a maximum width of whatever that is and then we set the margin <coughs> to auto and then that's gonna leave it uh, at 850 pixels it's gonna sort of lock this in so that it doesn't keep growing you see that so it's shrinking it's doing all these different things here but once you get out here uh, we really like that proportionate size and so we're just gonna leave it like that we can put a little bit of a margin <coughs> to the right <coughs> which will separate it from the text so we have a nice uh, we have a nice look here uh, maybe when you get to this size you would want to put the image above the text so that it's stacked um, but out here you want it to be side by side uh, so this is a very common pattern a uh, very common strategy you can use percentage here you can use uh, viewport widths or um, viewport height if you want actually to to change the width and um, you could use M's you could use rems you can use pixels you can use whatever measurement you want uh, to be able to create the proportions that you desire again I would encourage you to use a uh, grid primarily to do something like this because it's going to be easier to manipulate it <coughs> and easier to manipulate uh, how much space everything takes up because once you start using numbers and things like that you're going to have to be able to account for uh, this margin now uh, trust me I've done it it's not easy uh, if you have a more complex sort of layout so a grid takes care of uh, of the spacing uh, and then refigures all of the uh, proportions for you including this the internal spacing so uh, it's just a, it's a better tool 
to use for that, but you can use Flexbox um, for this sort of application. Okay, and let's move on to our last. Let's move on to the last one. Our last one is just visually reordering uh, the content on the page. Now, you might ask why you would want to do that. Why don't you just write the HTML so that it's right? Well, <clears throat> the problem with HTML is you can't always rewrite it. So in order to make something responsive, uh, you might need it to be uh, look one way on a phone and then it would be really great if you could just sort of manipulate the elements to look differently uh, once you get them out to a different size. <clears throat> um, my designers like to do this where I work and so I have to use reordering quite a bit because sometimes it just makes more sense to have an image on the left or the right or to have the headline above the image or sometimes to the left of the image. Um, and because we have reordering as a part of Flexbox, we can actually do that pretty easily. <coughs> Excuse me. So, again, if you have a very complex um, setup where you have a two-up, so you're you're going to be manipulating items uh, vertically and horizontally. So sometimes your headline needs to take up the full width. Sometimes it needs to be in one column over here. Sometimes this needs to be down and to the right in a column. But then the button and the headline need to be over here on the left. If you have a very complex piece where you're controlling the horizontal and the vertical, that's exactly what CSS Grid was made for, is to be able to control the axis on both, or to control the content on both axes. So vertical and horizontal. <coughs> so if you have that, you need to learn how to use CSS Grid. If not, if you're only uh, manipulating things across one axis, so vertically or horizontally, then CSS uh, Flexbox is fine. So let's say reorder is going to be display flex. Now <clears throat> we're going to get a weirdness here because the default, remember, is a row. So we have our one, two, three elements inside of our reordered element, right? So if you want these things to remain, you can see how it works when you get, you know, all scrunched up. If you want them to begin as flex items, then, uh, and you want them to be columns, you have to say flex direction of column. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me. And then uh, it's going to leave us with a column there. Let's go ahead and put some padding on there. <clears throat> Just to get everything away from the sides. So we have all of our elements in a column. This is exactly the same order that we have them in in our source. So we have the headline first, we have the text second, we have the button third, right? Headline, text, button. <clears throat> let's say that when we get out to uh, 500 pixels what we want instead is to have the text first the headline second and the button last then we would come down and we would make a media query so at media and with a minimum width of 500 pixels <coughs> we want to do something um, we can reorder these things uh, to be sort of the reverse. So the button would be first, the headline would be last, and this would be in the middle. <coughs> and that's a property of itself. But if you just want to manipulate individual elements, uh, then you just go to whatever the element is. So we want to reorder, let's say we want to reorder the headline <coughs> to be second, then we would say, reorder headline and we're going to use the property of order and we'll just put the value of where we want it to be when we want it to be second <coughs> okay so it's creating some weirdness here because <coughs> these things have sort of a, a default 
uh, and they're a default to the same order number. Okay, so if you need things in a specific order, if you just want to set this in one place and let everything flow around it, that's one option. So you would just change the order of the one element. But we're also going to have to uh, set the order of this element, which is the order button, <coughs> the reorder button. So let's take this <coughs> and we can set the reorder button to also be order of two. And because this is after the headline in the source order, if they have the same number, it's going to come afterwards. So this one is going to be implicitly the first one. This one's going to be explicitly the second one. And this one's explicitly the second one also, but because it comes second in the source order, then it's actually going to come after the headline. It won't come before if they have the same number. Now, if you change this to a one, <coughs> then you can see that it's actually going to be above the headline because the order number is above uh, the headline. But again, because the reorder button is after reorder text inside the HTML, it comes second, even though the implicit idea is this is order of one. <clears throat> That's the default for any element. They're all order one inside of this flex box. <coughs> so this has an implicit order one. This has an explicit order one. This one has an explicit order two, <coughs> but because it's still following the, um, it's still following the source order. Uh, these two elements here are still following the source order. So in order to make this button uh, down to the bottom, uh, we can explicitly call this order of three. <coughs> and then this is going to actually order it one, two, three. And you could even come in and you can make, if you needed to make changes along the way, and you don't need it to just sort of flow, you don't want to leave that up to chance, uh, then you could say reorder text is going to be uh, order of one. So this is explicitly one, this is explicitly two, this is explicitly three. <coughs> you can change this to three and one and then it flips everything around. So now we have our button and our headline. So this is going to be one and two and three. And you can see here that inside of our HTML nothing has changed. So the beauty for me is that when you're thinking about accessibility or you're thinking about a screen reader and you're thinking about how a page is laid out, normally we would have, let's say, an image at the top with a headline with a little text and then a button. Visually, that makes a lot of sense uh, to people <coughs> because the headline is attention grabbing and so is the image. So you want those things to be first uh, when you display them. However, if you were just reading through here with a screen reader, what's the most important information? The most important information is the headline, and then the text, and then the button, and then the image. So when you have an image <coughs> um, first inside of your HTML, someone's going to have to skip past that image. If you didn't handle the image well, if it's not uh, relevant to what the person is about to read, <coughs> then there's no real reason necessarily to have the image first in the source order other than that's how it gets rendered to the page, right? So <clears throat> with CSS Flexbox or Grid, uh, either one, they both have reordering properties. You can actually put the, um, the source order in the best way possible for a screen reader or for someone who needs um, a better accessibility that's not visual you can put those things in the right source order and then for the visual users which is probably 90 percent of the people who will be using your app or your website you can reorder the elements on the page so that they are visually getting the best thing first for them okay so reordering content can be really important uh, not only to match a, um, a design from a designer but also from a perspective of uh, both SEO and um, to help those who 
are using a screen reader or they're using something to read aloud uh, the page to them. All right, hopefully uh, this gives you some some good examples of how to use Flexbox. Again, these are these are ways that I use Flexbox basically every day in uh, design projects that we do uh, for our company and <coughs> learning how to do these things and to be nimble and understand when I make these changes this is going to happen that's actually going to be a real plus uh, in your development and allow you to create more sophisticated layouts and responsive website uh, designs if you have any questions uh, please leave them down in the comments section below I'll get to them as quickly as I can uh, if you have any suggestions for more videos in the future or was this helpful or not helpful um, also give it a thumbs up that helps it to be discovered more and if you subscribe to my channel then you'll get notifications uh, either on the YouTube app or through your email um, whenever I post new videos so this week I've been a little busier <coughs> and have done three three videos so a little bit of a bonus week and uh, normally one or two videos will come out every week and um, I'm going to be focusing on sort of deep diving into some of these uh, basics and helping <coughs> helping new developers understand uh, and even old developers understand sort of what they're doing whenever they're manipulating these different things and not just showing you how to solve a problem but teaching you how to fish you know so that you can solve multiple problems uh, using these particular tools so hopefully it's a Hopefully it's been valuable to you. If it has and you think it'll be valuable to someone else, just share it. Uh, that would be awesome. And uh, I appreciate all the encouragement from everyone who's subscribed to the channel and, and leaves encouraging comments. That's, that's really helpful to me uh, to know that my skills and experience over the last 20 years are not for naught. <laughs> and they're not only to sell products, but they're actually helping the next generation of developers to, uh, to grow and to get up to speed uh, quickly on some of these newer uh, tools and technologies. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.